uh, very good morning to all. Uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee of SAGES for giving us the opportunity to present our study in front of this international panel, uh, especially in this difficult COVID era. I bring greetings from uh, India, from All India Institute of Medical Sciences situated at New Delhi. Uh, my name is Dr. Rasuri Krishna, I'm, and I'm working as an associate professor at the Department of Surgical Disciplines at Ames, New Delhi. Uh, today, I shall be presenting before you uh, our study of a three-arm randomized controlled trial to compare the sexual function following open mesh hernioplasty, laparoscopic TAP, and TAPP repair of groin hernia. Um, I would like to say that I do not have any financial disclosure, nor any conflict of interest. Uh, Lichenstein has been the gold standard for inguinal hernia repair for many decades. However, the last two decades has seen a, a emergence of laparoscopic repair for TEP and TAPP. Mesh-based techniques always have given the best results and the least recurrence rate. Since the time of inception of hernia repair, the focus has always been on recurrence, which has been considered as the Achilles seal of any groin hernia repair. However, with standardization of most of the techniques, both open as well as the laparoscopic technique, the focus has shifted on other important patient-related outcomes, that is the chronic groin pain, quality of life, fertility, sexual and testicular function. Now, these have been studied in literature, for example, Short and et al. have shown that TEP repair results in improved sexual activity. And Bischoff et al. has shown that there is a, is a slight increase in pain after laparoscopic repair. However, there is a dearth of literature, especially on the fertility, sexual, sexual and testicular functions following laparoscopic and open groin hernia repair. So the primary aim of this study was to compare the Lichtenstein mesh hernioplasty with TEP and TAPP repairs in terms of sexual function, semen quality, and presence of anti-sperm antibodies. Now, it was a three-arm prospective randomized study, which was conducted from July 2017 to January 2019 at the Department of Surgical Disciplines at Ames, New Delhi. Consecutive patients of groin hernia undergoing uh, open or laparoscopic repair were randomized to either of the three techniques. Male patients between the age of 25 to 50 years with primary uncomplicated unilateral or bilateral inguinal hernias were included. Uh, those with recurrent complicated hernias and those with history of any orchidectomy or hydrotherapy surgery were excluded from the study. The primary outcome measure was sexual function in terms of the BMSFI, the fertility indexes. The surrogate marker of these fertility indices are the semen analysis, both qualitative and quantitative, and anti-sperm antibodies. And then we had the testicular volume. The secondary outcomes included chronic groin pain, intraoperative and postoperative complications, and quality of life measured using a WHO quality of life scale. So preoperatively, uh, just before surgery, the sexual function was evaluated in all the patients using the brief male sexual function inventory. The fertility, fertility indices were assessed by doing a qualitative and quantitative semen analysis and for checking a quantitative anti-sperm antibody levels. The testicular function were assessed by doing a testicular volume and resistive index and the quality of life was done by using a WHO quality of life scale. All these parameters were repeated after three months following surgery. The testicular volume were measured using an ultrasound Doppler Along with this, the resistive index was also measured. Standard statistical analysis tests were used. SETA version 14 was used for analysis. Coming to the, uh, uh, the consort uh, figure, total 292 patients were alleged were assessed for eligibility, out of which 171 patients were excluded. Finally, we randomized 121 patients with 41 in TAPP group, 14 in DEP, and 14 in the open lichenstein repair group. And the final analysis was also done on 41 patients in TAPP group, 40 in TEP, and 40 in open, and none of the patients were lost to follow up. The overall follow up period for assessment of the quality of life, semen analysis, and sexual function was at three months. The patients were called at one week following discharge, at one month, and then at three months. Now, coming to the result, 
on comparing the demographic profile between the three groups all the three groups were comparable in terms of the mean age as well as the pmi when we come to the uh, the hernia characteristics the most common hernia in all the three group was a unilateral hernia however different types of inguinal hernia that is direct indirect unilateral and bilateral were almost equally distributed among the three groups and there was no statistical difference between the three groups now coming to the sexual function that is using the bmsfi score if we see there was a significant improvement in the all domains of bmsfi especially the sexual drive the ejaculation score and the sexual problem assessment in the overall population however when we compare the three groups individually though there was an improvement in each of the group the three groups were comparable to each other in terms of the improvement of sexual functions now comparing comparison of among the groups you can see that though there was significant improvement in each of the group the three groups were comparable to each other in terms of all the different components of the sexual function score now coming to the uh, comparison of the semen analysis pre and post operative period there was a significant improvement in all the components of quantitative assessment of semen analysis in the study population from the pre operative to the post operative period and also individually in each of the three groups the semen volume the semen concentration all shows a significant improvement however when we compared the three groups there were there was no difference in terms of the change in the semen level uh, semen analysis parameters now coming to the anti sperm antibodies level the anti sperm antibody levels did not show any difference between the pre operative and post operative level in tp and tap group however in the open hernia group there was a significant increase in the anti sperm antibody levels following the lichenstein repair however even though there was a significant increase the value of the asa levels were within normal limits and therefore it is difficult to say what is the actual clinical impact of this elevated anti sperm antibody levels now coming to the testicular volume all the three groups were comparable and there was no change in the testicular volume in the entire study population and also in either of the three groups similar results were found in terms of resistive index where all the three groups were comparable to each other without any statistical change coming to the post operative complications the post operative complications were almost equally distributed in the uh, in all the three groups and there was no significant difference between the laparoscopic and open uh, hernia repair in terms of the complication rates coming to the uh, comparison of the post operative pain score uh, the pain score was assessed at different time intervals uh, following the repair at 1 hour 6 hours 24 hours and at 3 months as a part of the chronic groin pain as you can see from this figure that all the three groups were comparable in terms of different pain score and also the incidence of chronic groin pain was also similar in all the three groups at the end of 3 months now coming to the quality of life it is uh, it is uh, it is important to note that there was an overall improvement in all the domains of the who quality of life in the study population from the pre operative to the post operative level when we compared all the three groups the three groups were comparable in terms of the quality of life so though the hernia repair improved the quality of life of the entire study population whether it was an open repair or a laparoscopic repair thus to conclude i would like to say that groin hernia repair improves sexual function and quality of life and all the three techniques that is the lichenstein repair the tep repair and tapp repair are comparable in terms of sexual function testicular flow dynamics and quality of life significant elevation of asa does occur following open repair as compared to laparoscopy but however the levels were within the normal limit and the clinical significance of this is debatable thank you very much for a patient listening